So in this clip, I'm going to show you that what can lurk behind these galactic curves can be either a filament or a cylindrical source of whatever dark matter is or whatever takes its place. Now if you watched the earlier clip, then you know that all we need is one power of r. This comes about because the square velocity in these galaxy rotation curves is constant, as opposed to 1 over r, which is what Kepler would tell us and what we see in the solar system. Now if we translate this into a force law, the force in galaxies has to fall as 1 over r instead of the 1 over r square law of Newton's gravitation. Dark matter achieves this 1 over r with a spherical halo by distributing its density in a special way, as we saw. Now, this 1 over r happens to be Newton's law in one less dimension. How does this come about? Well, if you have an n-dimensional space, you have to distribute the gravitational flux over a sphere that falls off as one less power of the distance to the center in that space. That is, if you're living in an n-dimensional world, the volume grows as r to the n dimensions, but the sphere's volume grows as n dimensions minus 1. So the force law falls as 1 over r to the n minus 1. This is studied in freshman physics and falls off from Gauss's law right away. Now we live in three dimensions, so that's why we see a 1 over r square law in gravitation. So how do we come up with one less dimension? Well, a dimensional reduction can be achieved with a cylindrical source. If you have something that stretches left and right infinitely long, physics doesn't change if you move either to the left or to the right. Everything happens on the perpendicular plane to that cylinder, and for all purposes, it's like if the relevant world had one less dimension. So here's the picture. The galaxy is this blue and yellow blob at the center, and then you have either a cylinder or a filament threading it through the center, and if you take the perpendicular plane, which is where the galactic rotation curves lie, then they would fall off with one less power of r. Now this cylinder has two parameters. One is the linear mass density, lambda, which is the mass per unit length, and the other is its thickness. And uh, let's leave this aside for a moment, because it might be infinitely thin, or it might have a finite thickness, and the galactic rotation curves outside the cylinder wouldn't know the difference. This is again a consequence of Coase's law. Right, so let's see how this is a natural explanation of the rotation curves. The gravity outside the cylinder falls off from Gauss's theorem to be g the acceleration equals minus a vector pointing outwards and then 2g lambda divided by r. Let's equate this to the centripetal acceleration that is needed to make the stars rotate around the galactic center, and this is mv squared over r. We put both equations together, so 2g lambda over r is equal to mv squared over r, and we get that the velocity has to be the square root of twice Cavendish's constant times the linear mass density. And no fine-tuning is needed, it just falls off. Constant velocity suggests a cylindrical source. So let's put some figures in. If the velocity is measured in v100, which is a unit basically 100 kilometers per second, so how many times 100 kilometers per second is a star moving around the galactic center, then lambda comes out to be 1.16 this velocity square times 10 to the 12 solar masses per megaparsec. Now for our close neighbor spiral galaxy Andromeda, v100 is 2.2. That means that the stars are seen to move at around 200 km per second. Remember, in the solar system, our scale was like 30-40 km per second in the first clip of this series, so these are large velocities. Now, this suggests that lambda is about 5.6 10 to the 12 solar masses per megaparsec. So here's an estimate of the linear density of these cylinders. If we put it together with um, Andromeda's stellar mass, that means that the megaparsec of this filament contains seven times the stellar mass. And because galaxy spacings are of this order, this means that these filaments basically account for all dark matter that we see. 